Hello, yes, it's me. And I'm finally wearing contacts again. I'm so excited. I miss my face. Um, don't insult it, please, and thank you. Plus, no more annoying glasses glare. That's cool. Um, today I just wanted to do a fumble video about fantasy tropes that I don't like. For some reason, it's really easy to talk about things I don't like. I know there's a lot of negativity on the internet. Not trying to add to it. Just trying to get some criticisms out that I haven't really heard before. So, let's get started. The first trope that really poisons my apple, really... Glasses my slipper. I don't really have... It, it took me a long time just to come up with poison my apple, okay? <laughs> it really salts my... I don't know, really lentils my fireplace. Whatever. So the, the first thing that really annoys me is when fantasy stories basically equate marginalized groups to magical groups. Um, the first transgressor that comes to mind is the Maleficent sequel, Mistress of All Evil. And I just remember watching it and being like, I've seen this done so many times before and I've seen it done better. Of the whole, like, well, humans chased us underground and we're just defending ourselves. And so we're not the bad guys, even though we're clearly the more powerful group of people. <laughs> like, I understand drawing some parallels between it. Like, people are always going to find reasons to, to not like differences between them. But to act like these giant winged fairies who are insanely strong and magical are less of a threat to humans, especially like medieval humans who have nothing but like trebuchets and swords is just not true. At least it wasn't explored well in the story. I don't know. I just don't like it. <laughs> I think it brings up some icky connotations. Yeah, I, I also don't really love it in um, Fantastic Beasts, even though the original Fantastic Beasts I kind of like, but the whole like, well they repressed us and held the Salem Witch Trials years ago and so now that gives us the right to alter their brain chemistry and make them forget things. It's to protect ourselves. It's not abusing our power in any way, shape, or form. Of course not. I just, I think that there are other ways to have conflict and other ways to have nuance and symbolism and all that good stuff. It, but this ain't it. This ain't it, sis. Um, the second thing that really irks me in fantasy cliches or just names in general. I, I find it so exhausting reading a book that has a million and a half names, both place names and people names, where it's literally just they threw alphabet soup together and capitalized the first letter and they're like, yep, that's good. <laughs> or like they obviously squished two names together I just find it so irritating. In like sci-fi, I can understand it to a point because it's like in the future you do understand that name trends might change. We're already seeing a lot of bad name trends. <laughs> and even in like stories about aliens, you can understand them wanting a name that sounds really alien and really weird. But like fantasy, there's no need for me to open a book and read a story about the two leads, Stanisthesia and Dirk. Like, I don't, what are those names? They tell me nothing about those people and they're hard to remember. I have very bad memory. I already have a hard time remembering regular names after a while of not revisiting the story. And now you want me to do it with these weird <laughs> hybrid names. Stop. I just, I got so angry with it 
when I heard about um, people saying good things about The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. And so I was like, oh, that sounds like it's up my alley. And I open it and there's just so many weird ass names. I would tell you some, but I literally can't remember them. And I started this book twice because I'm bad at remembering things and I let the digital book borrowing lapse. So then I had to re-borrow it and start it over because I'd forgotten all their names. Even the human characters had weird names. I hated them. I hated them. I'm like, who's that again? I don't remember. I hate it. And they all sound the same. They don't have differences to me. I don't get it. I also got this feeling, and I know a lot of people like it too, so don't come for me. When I watched um, part of the pilot episode for The Witcher on Netflix. Yes, I know it's supposed to be really good, but as soon as I turned it on, it was just unfamiliar name, unfamiliar name. It's like so many proper nouns being thrown at me that I don't know and you're trying to explain to me, but I'm I'm already trying to get a feel for characters and I just it's a lot of new stuff, okay? And it's a TV show. Like you have time to flesh that out. You have no excuse. Give them normal names. Like even if you have to like look up really old names, but just like look for names that are easy to spell and understand. And some I understand, like I realize that Rick Riordan writing a series on Greek mythology, you're gonna get some names that are weird. But like, it's easy to Google those names pronunciations, you know? Even though people keep telling me, and I saw, I saw the tweet, okay, where he said that Talia's name was pronounced Thalia. I'm never ever pronouncing it that way because that's stupid and I've never heard it that way. Death of the author for that particular name, sorry. So yeah, as soon as I hear, like, Hi, I'm Trinitabago. Electric chair. <laughs> gone. You're- I closed the book. You're gone. Even Hunger Games, like, Katniss is pretty easy to understand, right? And it's still, like, it's a word. It's a plant. Same with PETA. So, like, if you want to take other words, Maybe in the future, people name their kids after bread a lot. I don't know. <laughs> and then the third thing that annoys me about fantasy, and this is a pretty broad one, it, it's really hard to avoid, honestly, is when there is too much scale, not enough character. Um, I see this a lot in sci-fi, too. It's a reason that I don't like sci-fi very much. Um, because at least when there's too much scale in fantasy, you can have fun with it, but when there's too much scale in sci-fi, you're like, okay, these big masses of metal are fighting each other, and I'm supposed to care, but I don't, because they are not humans. The most obvious example I can think of right now is the original Dark Crystal, Jim Henson's movie. And I, I love The Dark Crystal, don't get me wrong. I find it really fun to rewatch. But, like, you watch it and they're nothing characters. Like, can you tell me one personality trait of the two main Gelflings? No, you can't, okay? You watch it because it has really cool puppetry and really cool world building. And you can appreciate that. You can appreciate world building. But, like, I'm not here because I really care about the fate of these two little creatures, you know? I'm here because I just like to- I just like to be in the world. I just like to sit here and... I guess the Skeksis are pretty interesting, but even they're- they're still pretty one note, you know? But on the bright side, it gave us Dark Crystal Age of Resistance on Netflix. I love that show because it combines the really cool scale and- and What's the word? Effects. <laughs> I forgot for a second. Effects of the original movie, but it also gives us these really fun, cool characters that I'm really interested in learning about. Um, this problem also uh, often manifests itself in, like, in things being very often two-dimensional. Like, um, you'll often run into discussions on race and fantasy because it's like, 
well, these people are all this way. Like, all the dwarves are very gruff and manly. When it's like, well, people don't always work like that. You know, they they can sometimes fall outside of their their box. And I think some of that is rooted in some just bad, irrational stuff that's just been perpetuated because of tradition. Um, and some of it is just because, like, it's easy. You know, you build a big world and, and it's easy to be like, well, this group of people does all this thing because I need them to for plot, you know? <laughs> but I think that we can do both. I think it's been done really well before having a really well-built world and also having people who reside in that world be really well fleshed out. Another fantasy cliche I dislike is the arbitrary separation of the human world from the magic world. Um, this is also kind of exemplified in Fantastic Beasts, but it's easier to overlook, especially because I like the movie overall, but Crimes of Grindelwald was the worst, and so it was a lot harder to look beyond. Like, you just, the whole time you're thinking of, like, wouldn't it be useful if the humans knew about this? Like, what? This is kind of, like, Grindelwald's kind of a big threat. Shouldn't we let them in on this? And they're like, no, okay, because we're defending ourselves. And we've already explained why I don't like that. <laughs> Plus, Crimes of Grindelwald brought up the whole, like, Grindelwald is, like, trying to stop World War II? Well, what? <laughs> That's good, isn't it? <laughs> then it's like, but the Wizarding World knew about World War II and didn't do anything? Like, what can they do? Can they cure cancer? Because that would be very useful. Thanks. And it just gets even worse in some other properties where it's like, but you can do a lot. Like, all this magic could really benefit if if we banded together, you know? Which is why I was one of, apparently, the few people who liked the Star vs. the Forces of Evil finale. Spoilers, by the way. It's been out for a while, it's fine. Um, where Star decided to merge the magical dimension with the human Earth. And I was like, thank you. This is what we needed. This makes sense. I know that it's going to be hard to to adjust, but I think in the grand scheme of things, it's better if it's one world. It's even better. Um, another show that did that was Troll Hunters. Great show. You should watch it. But I think it'd be even better if we just did away with the trope altogether and there was never any separation and we just had magical people working together with non-magical people. I know that sounds crazy, but literally what reason is there to not do that? Why? 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 There's none. You can't find any. So, if you can, don't put it in the comments. Don't tell me. Um, and the fifth and final fantasy cliche that I dislike is when writers equate magical powers to like marginalized groups like neurodivergency or sexuality, things like that. I do think that you can draw parallels between the two. I don't think it works as a one-to-one -one analogy. And I've seen it done in okay ways. Like, I really like how in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. when, again, spoilers, when the Agent Fitz character who has gone through brain damage um, tells the newly transformed into super-powered Daisy that you know, she's she's still the same person, and it's going to be hard for people to accept that she's different, but she's still the same human, you know? <laughs> so it's more like 
I've seen it done so many times that, you know, when things are done more, the probability that they're going to be bad is also high. And I just think it's not a very good one-to-one -one analogy. Magical or supernatural powers are often very extreme and make you able to kill someone at a moment's notice. That's not the same thing as, like, being gay or being on the spectrum or what else is there? Just, just not being white. I don't know. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not the same thing. <laughs> Again, you can experience some of the same feelings and things, but don't act like they're on the exact same level. Please and thank you. We'd like it to stop. I shouldn't say we. I don't speak for everyone, but I would like it to stop. What is this video? Like, I've discussed how I don't like it in Frozen. <laughs> it's, and I think it's kind of dangerous, honestly. In some properties, at least. Like, saying that, oh, if you've gone through trauma, or if you have a disability, then that's, that's, that's good. You should just accept it all the time and be happy about it. It's not the same thing. <laughs> If anything, magical powers should be equated to getting any other cool new ability, like learning karate. <laughs> like, like I hate how in X-Men, Storm talks to Rogue as if their powers are the same. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. She's dangerous. And yes, she should learn to master those dangerous powers that they're less dangerous she was born with them but you can do cool things storm she cannot <laughs> so as soon as i am voted in as president of hollywood i promise to cancel all of these tropes immediately unless i think they're done well specifically <laughs> case by case basis <laughs> so vote below to bring my campaign to California. Thank you. I just don't like these things and I want to talk about them. Um, so if you want to talk about them, go ahead in the comments. But nothing mean because I am a sensitive soul.